Mr. Clark, are you ready to go? Yeah, we don't uh Councilor Conway's not here, but he's not he's not coming. And right. uh, I think Hoey on the other side's not here, but I'm ready to go. Okay. Um uh, the roll call. Well, why don't we proceed? Um still, I'm sure it'll be a full hour, so hopefully the members uh will keep joining us. Roll call. Jim and Elliot. Here. Councilor Conway. Councilor Noon. Here. School Committee Ma Martin. Here, sorry. School, school Committee Dakota. Here. School Committee Hoey. Six present. Um, so this is a another joint meeting of finance subcommittees from the school department as well as the city council. So uh, myself and uh, Chairwoman Martin will share the responsibilities of the stage. <laughs> Um, but it's just kind of a follow up um, as we've committed to to just continue to share information. Um, and with that, um, we also, well, maybe we'll just go um, Mr. Baldwin and then Ms. Turner and kind of share that way if that's okay with you, madam. Yep, that sounds great. Okay. So um, with that, Mr. Baldwin, can we just, um, can we just start with um, sort of the, Maybe a quick overview. I know we, the council has regular meetings on the status of finances. So why don't we just start with maybe a little bit of um, a status quo where we are with, I don't know, net school spending budget real, real quick. And so I'll turn it right over to you and then we'll, um, we'll go to members with questions and um, kind of just free flow of information. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman um, and, and Madam Chair. Uh, I'll, I'll be very brief and just recapping some of the discussion that we've had in the city council finance subcommittee um, to bring us up to date to kind of frame the discussion here tonight. So at the last finance subcommittee, we, we talked in 
in relative detail about the revenue uh, collections for the city this fiscal year. Uh, right now, we're tracking slightly ahead for fiscal 2021. Um, we're at about 65% collected uh, through almost the end of the eighth period in the year. The next largest receipt uh, that the city is anticipating will be from the first commitment of the motor vehicle excise taxes. Uh, there's about 67,000 bills that have been committed and we'll start to recognize that revenue soon. Uh, on the expense side of the ledger, year to date through February 23rd, we're at about 58.5% expended. Uh, that's 212.9 million of the revised budget of $391.8 million. That includes the city side and the schools. Um, to talk a little bit about net school spending, uh, the 2020 net school spending figures have been certified. Uh, the city exceeded the net school spending requirement by a little bit over $7.3 million. Every year when the certification is provided, they uh, include an estimate for the subsequent year based on budgeted figures. That number is $2.6 million for FY 2021. Uh, historically, it has been my experience that the budgeted estimate for the next year uh, is, is very conservative and usually we beat that number, which is the case um, in this year. However, 2021, uh, um, it goes without saying, is, is a bit of a, an aberration. Um, some of the things that were referred to this subcommittee that uh, I think are, are part of the discussion will be the federal funding, both on the city side and the schools. Uh, the school department did receive uh, ESSER funding, both ESSER 1 and, and ESSER 2. Uh, the first of which was 4.8 million and the second ESSER 2 uh, was a more substantial amount of $17.9 million. Uh, and I believe that is the subject of discussion on the agenda this evening. So I'll leave it there for discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're muted. Got it on mute, Ronnie. Jesus, I'm sorry. Um, so any questions from um, members of both sides uh, relative to any discussion? Um, <clears throat> Mr. Baldwin's correct. Um, I think there was a motion. I forget who. Forgive me. I forget who made the motion. Just um, kind of having a discussion of where the school, where and how the schools are uh, financially and um, plans preparations um, for this year. Certainly, ESSER one funding has received, and I think that it is good news for the city and the schools to receive um, additional mm -hmm. federal funding of 17.9 million. But if there's no other questions from Mr. Baldwin. Um, Madam Chair, why don't I just, uh, you know, just turn it over to you and I'll take it from there. Sure. sure. Um, you know, I do think one of the, the key things to remember, the 4.8 ESSER, and Billy Joe, you can correct me, but that was for within this current fiscal year, but the ESSER 2 does stretch out over two fiscal years, right. just to be clear. So th that has a, a very different kind of spending goals attached to it as opposed to the, the the monies that need to get spent within this current year. Um, I just was ESSER 1, was there a hard deadline, sort of like similar to the CARES Act money that initially was December 31, and then that was, that changed and there was a rolling deadline, or was it similar? Yes, to yes it was um, December was the end, the end date at first, but then they extended it to June 30th, the mm -hmm. ESSER 1. Okay. Thank you. So I know uh, Ms. Turner has a presentation ready. So if, if it's amenable to everybody, we can jump into that. Can I share the screen or do I need permission from Mike? Go ahead. I don't know. Go ahead. Go yep, ahead. Got it. Can you see it? Yep. Okay. So this is, um this presentation is just to update you on where we stand fiscally. We actually have three pools of money. Um, the three pools of money that we are tracking and, um, um, you know, planning for over the next few weeks would be the FY 2021 savings. We adjusted the original spending plan to align with our current needs and goals, and that's approximately $10.5 million. Um, we met with the finance subcommittee for the school, I mean, the finance, the school committee finance subcommittee last night to share our plans for those funds. Um, the next 
pool of money that we would like to share with you is the FY21-22 Chapter 70 fund. It looks as though we're going to get a $10.3 million increase to $177 million for Chapter 70 based upon the governor's numbers. And then the third pool of money would be the FY21 to 23 ESSER 2 fund. And as um, Connor Baldwin said, it's $17.8 million, but it is for over two years. The and we can say too, just Billy Joe, before we launch into the next slide, just, I mean, and, and I know counselors are aware and certainly on the school committee side, you know, the governor's budget for 21-22 for is an exercise. There'll be a, a great deal of work that will go in you know, from the, from certainly with our delegation in the mix, um, but it's just so we know that it's a, it's a projection. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. So the first um, pool of money would be the FY21 savings. And this is based upon our original projections. When we built our budget, it was based on projections that would maximize in-person learning. But as you know, we've done a lot of remote time this year. So our budget to actuals shows um, vacancy savings from unfilled positions and retirement savings that approximate $5.2 million. We also see a savings in the long-term subline of $200,000. We see a savings in the day-to-day -day subline approximating $1 million. Our transportation, of course, we have a lot of savings in that line, even with the assumption that we'll have the full 66 buses in April, May, and June, we're still looking at a $4.1 million savings in that line. So this equals approximately $10.5 million, which again, we shared a plan with the school committee last night. The limitations of these funds is that we cannot carry the funds forward to the next fiscal year. Um, we cannot just increase our budget next year for the, by this amount. We can't prepay for salaries or services. Um, we have a short window of time to make decisions. We can't make the decisions too soon, being that we need the accurate forecasting, but we still need to make them quick enough to act, being that there are limitations on the spending time frame and when the bills come in, we don't want more bad bills. Um, there are also limitations to how funds can be used while remaining compliant with the net school spending eligibility. We can have facility costs over 150,000 and equipment over 5,000 that would not be considered eligible. So we have to be pretty careful with what we choose to spend the funds on. Um, one thing, the FY21 prioritized needs and opportunities. We have the 10.5 million extra dollars this year, but we have four goals that we're spending that on. One is to improve academics and student achievement. With all of the learning loss that we have right now, we need to spend approximately $7.6 million. That would be on digital learning, supplemental staff, COVID pool testing, indoor air quality, and professional development. We, we had um, a major investment in one-to-one -one devices last year with the savings we had, but if we don't offer professional development to go along with this, it's like having you know, high-tech equipment, but no one to know, you know, that would know how to use it. So professional development is a big one that we have to invest in. The second goal that we want to invest in is improving operational efficiency across the system. We want to pre-purchase supplies and replenish the revolving accounts again. Now, when we pre-purchase supplies, we're very careful to not, we did it this past year because we knew the Student Opportunity Act would kick in this year. So we knew we'd be a, we would be able to replenish the accounts. We made a, um, we, analyzed how much we can expect as an increase next year to make sure that we don't pre-purchase supplies and then find ourselves in a structural deficit next year. So we're very careful with that. Um, goal number three, ensuring that every school is safe and welcoming. We wanna do in, um, facility improvements after we talk to the city and make sure that it's okay, like there's an agreement between the city and schools, if we can possibly make improvements to the schools of 1.6 million. And the fourth goal would be to increase community engagement. We're thinking of investing um, possibly in an online registration software to bring ourselves into the modern day world. And that was the first pool. That was the FY21-22 savings. Second pool that we would like to point out to you tonight is that the chapter 70 increase of approximately $10.3 million that the governor's budget released. Um, that is barely enough to cover our automatic annual increases due to contractual increases. Every year, we have step increases. We have increases to health insurance, increases to transportation and all of our contracts. So we lost $4 million. We did get an increase, thankfully, through Student Opportunity Act money. 
but we lost four million because due to the pandemic, a lot of students were um, you know, elected to withdraw from school and go into homeschooling. And if you can see on the top where the little yellow square is, we actually lost 305 students, which is about $4.5 million in revenue. So even though we did get enough, I mean, we did get an increase and we're grateful for that. It's barely covering what we needed to cover. And we're hoping that when these 305 students return, that the money will come back to us because right now the state is discussing maybe holding us harmless, being that they know it's most likely due to COVID. We are expected to educate these students still. So if they return, we may not have the funds to add all the teachers that would be needed to um, educate the 305 students. But again, another thing that we wanna point out on the right-hand side where the little square is, is that the required district contribution from the city has increased by 2.2 million. Chapter 78 has increased by 10.3 million. So that's an overall um, 12.6 million. But as I was mentioning in the previous slide, even though we are expecting $10.3 million more in Chapter 70, we have to add back that $4.1 million to health insurance since we used ESSER funds to cover it. And Council Elliott, you had mentioned when we had a finance subcommittee meeting, a joint subcommittee meeting before, how that poses a problem that could possibly be a structural deficit. But being that we were in the bind of we needed to spend that money and we had to still balance the budget at that point, we had it cover the um, health insurance but now we added it back using the Student Opportunity Act money. We also have to add back approximately 250,000 in technology costs, such as subscriptions and licenses. And since we had prepaid these last year, we have to add back the $500,000 for system-wide supplies that we prepaid. We have to add back 1.5 million in audit district budgeted costs. We have to fund the contractual step increases of 2.5 million. We have a health insurance increase, which is not known yet. And then we have contractual increases such as transportation and out of district schools, which are very expensive, as you have mentioned in the past or in our joint subcommittee meeting. The out of district schools go up by 5% annually. So these are just some costs to show you what our second pool of money is going to cover. Um, the third pool of money is the ESSER 2 funding. And again, we must address the learning loss. And um, we have to cover, um, it will be used to cover, um, address learning loss over a two year period. Um, this was showing how when we based our estimates on the original releases from various sources, we expected a $20.75 million um, ESSA 2 funding source, um, where again, we're grateful for the 17 that we got, the 17.8, but we were hoping for the 20.7 being that we have many, many needs. Um, this is a categorical grant. Go ahead. I see your hand. Madam Chair, can I just jump in for a second? Could you just explain, at least for me, before we go any further, the learning loss? What what does that, well, what, what exactly does that mean? Learning, learning loss? Work. I mean, you're not talking about the lost students. It, it, no, wait, that, that's the actual um, monies we're going to have to expend on summer school, on remedial activities come September, two to three years. It's really the recognition that, you know, that the remote learning cost us something uh, and most importantly cost students something. And that's what the ESSER is gonna be directed at bringing everybody back up to grade level. Yeah, no, that, I, I think that's important. I think that uh, is a good use of the money uh, anticipating that loss. So I, uh, sorry to ask that, that question, but um, I really wasn't familiar with um, with, with the term, the term, or well, I'm familiar with the term, but at least what is, what is the remedy for it? So I think that's significant. Thank you. So this is a categorical grant. It's like Title One. We have to follow the rules on spending. The um, spending rules were just released, so we are studying them. But prior to doing that, we had to come up with a plan on how we will address learning loss and what we'll do to remedy all of the, you know, lost time that the students had in the classroom. And um, this final slide is showing you that what we, you know, the other needs that we have that we're hoping that ESSER will be eligible to cover. We have $32.4 million of eligible prioritized resources needed to support the teaching and learning over a two year period. So we need extended learning time. We need an extended calendar for all schools. We need an extended day at the Renaissance schools, which are um, our schools that are most needy. We need expanded after-school programs district-wide, an expanded summer school program, 
we want to redesign early release days district wide and offer PD because we have all these new, all this new technology, all these new resources that came through during the remote you know, time. We don't want to waste that now. We want to use that, let the world, I mean, let the school district evolve and start using everything that they've learned, but we have to teach the teachers how to use these tools. Another um, need that we have a school-based intervention. We want to increase our school-based pool, the school-based programming and supplemental support staff. We allow the schools, we're doing fair student funding where we allow the schools to um, decide what they want to spend it on. They use a school site council in the community, parents, staff, and teachers get in, um, involved and they decide what they would like to invest their funds in. So this school-based pool, if we increase it, it gives the schools more money to um, support their own needs. We want to support external partnerships to support students and teachers within the Renaissance Network. Again, we want to focus on professional development for the staff, the additional professional development days prior to the start of the school year, a collaborative planning program set up and school readiness. And then last, we want to um, invest in a district-wide support for schools. We want to do technology support, data support, and targeted instructional coaching for Renaissance schools. All in all, there are those three pools, the current savings, the chapter 70 for next year, and the ESSER funds for the next two years. And where we don't, we can't give you concrete information because it's not it's not certain yet. But this is what we know as of today. And just so you know, we have, um, you know, our early plans for such funds. But again, we have to wait till we release, um, read all the regulations and guidelines to make sure we're spending it according to what the government allows. And that's all. Any questions? Well, no, I, I like the presentation. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> um, Rod, Rodney, I have a question. Yes, Coco Mercia. Thank you. Um, Billy Joe, when we talk about uh, students who, in, who have not come back, and we were saying 305 we, that we lost, what level of schooling were they from? Middle school, high school? Uh, K through five, what, where were they, the majority of these students from, like what grades? Do um, we know? Um, no, actually, I don't know. I can look into it, but, but it's, um, the data is released from the state and they do it in um, a summary format. So if, you know, that sheet that's on that slide is right from the DESE website and it's a summary format. But I mean, we could look into it and just see where the, where the majority of our loss is. We can check that by comparing last year's enrollment to this year's enrollment and just see where they are. So I could do that and I could um, get it back to you. I know you could, yeah, that spot. And I'm sorry to put you through that work, but I would be curious to know. Thank you. Yep. Great job there, kiddo. Thank you. I'd say too, um, I mean, we've had the conversation about how the, the, the loss of students was impact us from the very earliest days because we know the school district all of our chapter 70 funding is always based on our october 1st census so you know it, it historically whatever you however many students you had enrolled october 1st that was just written in stone you could never even if hundreds of students you know joined your district after that you wouldn't get paid for them until the next year uh and because of the you know what we had seen from the beginning of the, the pandemic, we knew that there was going to be this loss. And, and I know that that was communicated not only to, to Desi, but also to our delegation so that they were kind of aware that come this time of budgeting, we were going to really need to be able to add those students back in if they return, which we are anticipating the bulk of them returning. Thank you. No problem. So I, I like the plan. Um, I like the the layout. Um, I like that. I I can appreciate the effort that's that's gone in um, to this, and the use of the fundings clearly will be used for that learning gap that um, that the students certainly will need to fill, uh, along with the teachers. Um, Billy Chilcott, if um, yeah, I really I can't say enough. I think it's laid out very well, and it. Um, uh, provides lots of explanation, not only for, um, for the city council and the school committee, but also parents who um, can anticipate or can expect 
you know, the services um, that were not available, that will be available, um, to bring the kids back up to speed. So, Billy Joe, could you, um, can we go back to um, the surplus this year? Because I, I can appreciate sort of the restrictions, if you will. Uh, maybe the next slide, number five. Um, because a, a lot of these, we would love to be able to, or, and I'm sure that the school committee and school department would like to be able to address some of these, but some of them, we can't prepay salaries for services. We can't, you know, we have these windows of time to make um, decisions, can't carry them forward, et cetera. Um, it, infrastructure, um, I, we don't have, the, I, I don't think maybe the school committee has seen a plan for that. Um, 10, 10.6 million. Um, it, could you lay out some of the, the, the plan um, at, at any level for the use of that money? I mean, it, you mentioned prepaying me some contracts, et cetera, et cetera, but can, is there any other detail you could provide? Because I, yeah. I heard some discussions about infrastructure and, right. you know, from the meeting the other uh, last night. Yeah, last night. Yeah. Um, so it would be good to get a little bit more. Um, um, information for those of us that didn't watch the entire meeting. I think the, the key thing too, Rodney, around the, the kind of infrastructure investments, um, and that's where we have to be under the 150 or under the 5,000, that's actually going to be presented. We have a facilities um, subcommittee that's coming up on this Thursday. What time is uh, that? So I think you're going to be presenting that then. Yes. Okay. What time is that on Thursday? 5.30. 5.30, okay. Not, yeah, your, Thursday, your Thursday night plans are set. There we go. <laughs> Forget the Bruins. We're, we're Bruins just went out the window. But can I get can I get a link um, when you when you get a chance? Oh, thank you. Okay. Did that answer your question, or did you want more of more details with the other goals? Did you want just a summary of what we were going to do for facilities improvements, or did you want examples of what we were doing with the other money as well? If, if you could do both, I think that would be um, that would be helpful. But I, I'm sure that the facilities discussion will take place, you know, Thursday or in more in depth. However, I mean, there is that we are in February, almost March, so you know, some of the improvements it's a tight window, as we know, in, in, with public bidding pro projects. So, um, if you have information, fine. But if if not, then I'll certainly tune in on Thursday. Um, you know, certainly on the city side, we. we, we work together and we've made you know, lots of improvements and just kind of curious what okay. the funding will be used for yeah so some details for goal one would include the um 4.2 million of the 7.6 would be for digital learning um we need devices for our teachers principals social workers central office administration we need um device replacement some of our computers are 10 years old so now with our children um, get in all of these devices, we need equipment that can keep up with them. Because if we have mismatched equipment, then we're not able to keep up with them. So we have um, a $2 million investment with classroom hardware upgrades. One of the things we're going to do when we come back with the hybrid model is um, possibly have teachers teach a class with other students being able to view them. So that um, requires cameras and monitors. Um, we need things like new student device distribution. This past year, we bought one-to-one -one devices for students, but all the kindergarten students coming in or new students need devices. So about 4.2 million of that 7.6 is all for digital learning. We have about 270,000 for supplemental staff. So when teachers come back and they're in, um, when they all come back, we may need some substitutes because, um, or you know, additional paraprofessionals to help support the classrooms if the teacher has a medical exemption. So they're, they, if they have a medical exemption to stay remote, we still need the people in person. So 270,000 would be for that. Approximately 560,000 is for the COVID pool testing, where we test a pool of people at a school. Um, that is 560,000. The indoor air quality filters, that's about 60,000. And $2.4 million is for professional development. We plan on doing an eight hour session before school return um, for all all classroom instructional staff, including teachers and parents, um, they would get a per diem rate for that because it's an eight hour day. Mm -hmm. And then we plan on doing 40 additional hours throughout the rest of the year, um, weekly. We would do weekly professional development for the teachers. So the bulk of the money would be spent on digital learning, COVID safety, 
and um, professional development. And the facilities improvement is 1.6, but that detail is um, actually going to be presented on Thursday. They're preparing the report now. That's helpful, thank you. I'll turn it over to members of the subcommittee. Um, I can't see everybody's. Um, I don't know if we can. Actually, Billy Joe, I think if you stop sharing, then everyone will. Yeah. Oh, sorry, yes, okay. okay. <laughs> okay. My questions have been answered. Thank you. I appreciate a lot of information. It'd be, it'd be helpful to get that presentation too. It, it's concise and has a lot of information. Um, really um, so we're going <clears throat> open up to members of the subcommittee, uh, subcommittee member, Vesna. Mr. Chairman, I'm all set. Thank you. Great. All set. All right. Um, uh, other members of um, of the meeting, of the joint meeting? All set. Okay. Yeah, from the school side, we went through it all last night, so. <laughs> <laughs> Right, exactly. We already exhausted Billy Joe with our questions. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Good. Well, I, I appreciate that. I think it's good um, to get this information and tune in Thursday. Uh, um, good news is that there is funding coming in to to address the, the critical needs. Um, there's only the, in the next um, next round of federal funding. There'll be additional funds, which I'm sure will put to good use. But you know, there's good plans, in my opinion, good plans in place, and I appreciate the information that is that you've given. Um, <clears throat> I don't have any other questions. Mr. Mr. Chairman, just one quick request, if I may. Yep, uh, if uh, Billy Joe can uh, provide uh, counsel with the PowerPoint that she uh, put, put out tonight. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Was that linked in the agenda, Billy Joe? No, it wasn't. It was um no, I just prepared it uh yesterday so that mm -hmm. I could have something to refer to in case people need it visual. So no, I didn't have that. Should I, I can send it to Michael, right? Michael Gary to get off to each of you. That'd okay, I'll send that I'll send it tonight. Okay. Right. Well, thank you everybody um from from the city side, um members of the finance subcommittee and the school side. I appreciate the, the information and um and great work. So, anything else? Okay. Thank and you. Motion to adjourn by Ms. Martin, second by Uncle Swan. Good night. Thank you, everybody.